This is State Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back to Think Tech. It's Monday morning. <laughs> and this is Community Matters on Think Tech. We have a special show today involving Mary Knoll. And the title of our show is An All Star Graduate, an All State All Star Graduate Returns to Mary Knoll. Very exciting. It's the story of MJ Mao, who was a student at Mary Knoll, who came from China and who is now at the University of Wisconsin swimming and making a future. Fabulous to have him here. And Perry K. Martin, the president of Mary Knoll, right here, right now, with us here in our studio. We are honored to have you, Perry. Thanks for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Oh, great. Okay. So let's talk about how we got here. What, you know, what is the situation and um, um, what, what is the scope of what's happening at Mary Knoll and with uh, MC Mao? Oh, we're, we're really proud of, of MJ and, and MJ really, Mao, sorry. Yeah, and how he got here was. Mary Knoll has been uh, doing a lot of work in the last four or five years, building relationships in, in a number of countries, uh, one of them being China. And we've kind of believed that the ethos that the Mary Knoll sisters left us uh, about going into communities and becoming part of something international and making it better for the people there was really important. So uh, we did form some relationships uh, with schools in China, and one of those is MJ School. Yeah. Uh, MJ. MJ came to us from a small school in, in urban Shanghai. And he's just one of many kids that we're trying to find to come to Mary Knoll to kind of not only bring them to America, but also make America uh, a better place for our kids to see what China's like. Because a lot of them don't get a chance to go to China. So that's really the, the beautiful thing about MJ is he, he, was, he came to us and at the end of the day, I think he gave more to Mary Knoll than Mary Knoll gave to him. <laughs> Well, MJ, let's talk about you. Yeah. And so there you are in China, in the outskirts of Shanghai, and one day you decide you want to come to the United States. Talk about it. Uh, yeah, I was originally from Shanghai. Then about two years ago, I had a chance to uh, come to Hawaii for summer swimming training camp and just fall in love with here immediately and kind of decided I want to live and study here. So uh, I asked some of my friends for... Uh, the information, like the school system here in general. Then um, I also went back home, did research on each school. So um, at the same time, I was fortunate to get help and advice from uh, my coach and my friends here. Then end up deciding Merino is a perfect fit for me because yeah. uh, the school size is not, not that big, it's smaller. It offers a lot of individual work and I feel uh, super connects with my uh, classmates and teachers. And I, I think also with the uh, MX Scholar program in specific that offers me to learn the knowledge like I'm interested mm. in that prepares me for college mm. events. So overall, Mano is just the perfect fit for me. Yeah. So coming to uh, here was, was not like specifically planned, but the determination just happened when I was here. So. Yeah. Okay, well, a couple of questions about that. You mentioned before the show began that you started swimming at six. Yes. Uh, why? Uh, I think when I was young, I was very energetic, so I was always making a lot of noise at home. So uh, <laughs> my parents just decided, like, over the summertime, send me to uh, a swim school so I can spend some of, some of my energy and be quiet at home. So I just <laughs> fall in love with... <laughs> Let's just siphon off all that extra energy. <laughs> yes, yes. So I just fall in love with that sport. And yeah. that also offers me a lot of opportunities to meet great people. Yeah. And also to like travel uh, in China and travel abroad, which yeah. is one of my biggest... So hobbies. you were swimming, what, competitively in the, yes. in the school system in China? Yes, uh, school system, also club system. Club system. Yes. Now, uh, you, you also mentioned the MX program, and mm -hmm. I, I'd like to flesh that out a little bit. Perry, can you tell us what the MX program is? Yeah, a couple of years ago, Mary and I went into a uh, planning phase to find out what kids really are passionate about and try to find some pedagogical science behind when we plan our courses, 
uh, what could we put in front of them that would be magnets for these kids? And they wouldn't think at school because they're so passionate about doing it. So we put in basically four programs that kind of dealt with left brain, right brain research. So we had a medical program that we put in there. We had a STEM and aerospace program, a business and diplomacy program, and also an art program. Mm. So he was a recipient of the really the first, one of the first students through our art program. This is all breaking new ground. Everything that's happened here is breaking new ground. <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, brain research has popped up on the scene in the last 10 years. Yeah. There's, you still see a lot of schools, you know, Jay, like, are doing all the same things, right? They're following yeah. all the same processes. And Mary and all knew that there was another way, and we just happened to be a small enough school with an innovative board and a mindset that we can turn the rudder. Yeah, pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, and so we're real excited to put this into play. And this is our second year, so it's going great. That's great. That's great. And it's, it's really now. The whole thing is now. You know, the uh, global student body is now. Uh, these programs in science uh, are now. So what's the size of the school, before I forget to ask? We what, have about have 525 got? high school kids. Okay. We have about 600 lower school kids. And okay. that's K to 8. Mm -hmm. uh, two campuses, as you know, uh, that work really well. And about 150 employees, mm -hmm. roughly. Including faculty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're a, we're a mid-sized school. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of our strength, because being that size, we're able to do things like the MX program. A lot of schools can't do it because you're either too small or too large. We're in that perfect little mix right in the middle that allow yeah. us to be able to change. When was Marino established and who established it? We're, we're 90 years old this year. So Happy birthday. Thank you very much. <laughs> and the Marino sisters established our school. Um, there was about 11 nuns that came in um, and started our school. And we just kind of follow the, what they did. And, and we've come to where we have our own little niche. And part of that is just no bless or please, and the Mary Noel sisters wanted us to give back, and they did it back in the day, and we're doing it now. No bless or please. I love the I love the, the the phrase, and I and I love the notion of it. Good, it's great Good. that you're doing yeah, that. We love it too. So uh, MJ, so let's talk about uh, you know you you swam at uh, in China, and then you swam at Mary Noel too, yes. and then you went into this MX program mm -hmm. in aerospace, as I remember. Yes. And so this was all going pretty well, and then you graduated. How, how, where were you in the class? Were you at the top? Uh, yes, I, I should be on the kind of top. Yeah, kind of yeah, top. Above okay. average. I got to tell you, he's a very modest guy. <laughs> so, you know, we have to deal with that. Okay, top of the class, you graduated, you have lots of options for colleges. What were your options? Uh, I took a couple of visits to different universities that includes uh, Texas, uh, of course, the University of Wisconsin. I also went to Northwestern. I went to Harvard. I went to Brown. I loved all these schools, but did they all love you? I, I think they loved me as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I ended up deciding uh, between Brown and Wisconsin. So I picked Wisconsin at the end because I think I wanted to balance uh, swimming and academic while I was in college. And also Madison is the city I liked. And it's also different than Shanghai and Honolulu. So that's a new big challenge you for me. You want to have a new, a new view of things from yes. Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah, to live in a <laughs> different type of city. Yeah. Then, of course, that surely teach me, like, what does winter mean yeah. right now? <laughs> All right, well, yeah. of course, we're going to learn that too, don't you? <laughs> Even in the middle of climate change. <laughs> so you go to Wisconsin and you, you have swimming, and yes. you are on the team right now, yeah? So tell us about the team, tell us about how you're doing, and tell us about what it, what it teaches you to be on the team at Wisconsin. Uh, I think uh, to be a college team, uh, you definitely have a lot of responsibility because uh, your mission is to uh, not compete for yourself, but also but more for the school. That's also why I learned from Marino, because when I was in China, like swimming is more like an individual sport, yeah. you're basically competing for yourself. Yeah. But here it's more about, it's all about teamwork because uh, winning yourself doesn't mean anything. You, you wanted to help your teammates and work with your coaches to... Uh, this is in Marinol or is this, this in is, both Marinol and Wisconsin? This is in both, but yeah. I started with Marinol. So uh, you want to work, work with them to uh, reach out for the team success, not only like individual success. So uh, 
then I learned this in Merino that helped me to adapt into the collegiate system in Wisconsin for sure. Perfect, perfect match. So how are you doing in the team in swimming in Wisconsin now this year? This is your first year at Wisconsin, yeah? Yes, this is my first semester in Wisconsin. Uh, it's a big change uh, coming out from high school, this step into uh, college training. It's much more intense than what I used to have, but I'm trying to uh, get into it, trying to adapt as fast as I can. So far, I think uh, me and our, my, my team and me are doing well. And we are looking forward to, uh, we are here for training trip. That's why I came home. We are here for Yeah, as a matter of over... fact, in about an hour, you have a, a, a training, uh, yes, a yes, training session do. at UH today, <laughs> yes. right now. Yes. So we have to get you out the door so you can get back there in time, yeah? We don't want to, uh, you know, upset your training schedule, yeah? yeah that's very important. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we are here for about eight days for the training trip, then getting ready for our conference, then hopefully NCAA meets. Okay. You've been uh, traveling around the country doing competitive swimming this year? Yes. I've actually been to a lot of new places. Uh, some uh, like Georgia, went to Illinois, then Minnesota, then we are going to LA competing after this training camp, then head back to Madison. So I've been to a lot of places <laughs> because of swimming. So Perry, you're following uh, MJ. You're following his success. You're following his experience. Uh, what makes it so interesting for you? Why do you follow it this closely? MJ is an exceptional kid because he integrated so well with the other kids at Mary Knoll. He, he didn't stick out uh, like a foreign student. Uh, he didn't stick out because of how he looked at how his talent. He, he really was a Mary Knoller. And of course, watching him turn down, you know, um, Brown well, that was and impressive, Harvard. wasn't it? Yeah, that's a very impressive story, right? Uh, but you can understand that because of his talents, he wanted a school with a great swimming program and nice, great facilities and all that kind of stuff. But the one that sticks out to me is is I've been working with his coach and making sure I follow him. He just finished his first semester with a 3.8 GPA, so he's one of the top GPA students at on Wisconsin swimming. So we're very, very proud of that. And I, I, those are the kind of things that when kids come back and, and you hear these stories, and you know, swimming D1, that's, that's no, I mean, that's a tough thing to jump into as a, yeah, as a young no, kid. I, so I, we're I, real proud of them. It's very intimidating. I've been thinking about doing it myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not ready for it yet. <laughs> we're going to take a short break, MJ and, and Perry, and we'll be right back. We'll talk about the future, your, your plans for the end of the rest of this year and next year and career-wise, and Perry, we'll talk about how this affects Mary Knoll. What, what are the sea changes that this represents? We'll be right back. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Oh, hi guys. It's RB Kelly. I'm your host of Out of the Comfort Zone, where I find cool people with cool solutions to problems that all of us face. Now, the thing is, we're really cool, and I only invite really cool people, but the thing is, I think you're kind of cool too, so I think you should come and watch. That Thursdays at 11 a.m. here on OC16 Television with Think Tech Hawaii. I'm RB Kelly, host of Out of the Comfort Zone, and I will see you next Thursday. Okay, we're back, we're live, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, this is Community Matters on Think Tech. And the title of our show today is an all-star, all-state graduate returns to Marinol. It's all about swimming, technology, globalism, all those things working hand in hand, yeah. So um, we wanted to talk to you, MJ, about, you know, your, your plan and how it's evolving for you. Because, you know, you've been in the country, what, two, three, four years? Two huh? years. Two years, okay. And, so, and you've seen so much. I mean, it's yes. really terrific. I admire that. You've gotten around, you've integrated, you've yes. learned from everything, and uh, you're doing well in everything you've touched. This is fabulous. 
3.8, did you say? Mm -hmm. 3 point is modest, yeah. Okay, okay so <clears throat> here we are. We're going into the, what, your second semester at University of Wisconsin. Mm. Uh, how is that going to be, and how is the rest of your college experience going to be? Do you have a view of it? Uh, yes, I'm trying to uh, apply for the international business as my major in college, but I'm also very interested in interior design, so I'm working with my advisors to uh, try to see like how would these two major fit together and at the same time also explore other options because everything is possible. Sure. Yes. People study one thing, they do another, it happens all the time. Yes. But they gain some sort of you know, internal view of the world in studying one thing and they can use that. Yes. But I, I, have, I think your, your, uh, your, your advisor is, is going to be challenged to, to try to connect uh, international relations uh, with interior design one is outside, so as outside as you can possibly be, except for space. Right. Maybe that's why you like the space program. <laughs> and and the other is inside. So how do you connect them? What is he going to? What is he going to do? It's not easy. I think surely like these two majors are very different. That's what a lot of people told me. But interior design is my uh, own interest, and international business. I think uh, because I speak dual language right now, uh, my First language is Chinese, so that's a nature. That's like a nature advantage for me to do things like international business. Yes. So it's maybe it's international interior design. However, that plays out. <laughs> that sounds good. That could potentially happen, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, so don't lose the Chinese part. Mandarin is going to be more and more helpful in the world today, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, it it is getting more popular. Um, I heard like more. People speaking Chinese now, um, not only in Honolulu, but also when I went to Madison, I heard Mandarin. A lot of people are, are speaking. So, yeah. as a Chinese, ever I'm very proud of it. Yeah, well, you yeah. should be. I would be too. In fact, I've been thinking about converting to Chinese. You know? <laughs> it's an idea. So, uh, Perry, you you have a Chinese immersion school at Marinol. Can you talk about it? Yeah, we've had for the past eight years. We've had uh, Chinese programs in our school. And we found that the two or three periods a week wasn't enough. Uh, they weren't really enough characters to really be proficient in Chinese. So this was the first year where two-thirds of my kindergarten now, the kids get every day Chinese for one half day. It's, it's pretty phenomenal. And it's very exciting to watch it, too. And, and I think MJ's story, um, the Mary Noel sister story, and the programs that we're putting into Mary Noel, especially with immersion, uh, takes us to a place where kids are learning on both sides of their brain, they're becoming bilingual. So you can just imagine the difference between someone learning one language and someone learning two or three languages and what, and what you know, the, the calisthenics your brain is going through at yeah. that time. Yeah. So we think that that process will develop our students in ways that other schools can't develop those kids. Yeah. And so we're very proud of our kids. Yeah. Uh, you, you should see the five-year-olds talking Chinese. I, I walk in there and I'm, every day I'm just amazed, very thankful. Um, that we took this choice, and we know that as those kids go up the chain, that bilingualism will open all kinds of doors and opportunities sure. as they graduate. Sure, it's more than the language, it's a way of thinking, it's, it's a, way. a, a yeah. global expansion. So, you know, let's talk about uh, global. I mean, uh, the, will you stay in the United States for graduate school, or will you go outside the United States for graduate school? Will you go to graduate school? Uh, I think I will, because I think graduate school now is very important. Uh, before you have a job, you probably want to have a grad, a grad school degree. Yeah. So I think I will take grad school after undergrad, but I have no clue yet, like if it's I want early, to go out You're only of the six country. months into the program, so right. it's okay. <laughs> but you think graduate school in the United States, is that what your direction would be? Uh, yes. Okay. I think I, I, I would love to stay here, but if I would have a chance to go outside of the United States and China, I would also love to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah, because I always love to like explore new places and facing new challenges. That's one of my passion. Yeah. Wow. And what about swimming? I mean, you're going to you are going to swim this year. Are you going to continue to swim through your uh, University of Wisconsin uh, experience? Yeah, I will definitely uh, swim for four years. Then uh, let's see what's what what's going to happen. I mean, everything is possible. I might keep swimming, but that can also be. Uh, some good memories for me after swimming in college. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's more important? I know this is a hard question. Mm. The swimming or the career? 
That's a really good question. I think I'm trying to balance as much as possible. So overall, I think uh, my first purpose is, uh, I would say study is probably more important because that helps more after I graduate, after I finish my swimming career. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Would you ever consider the Olympics? Uh, actually, I would love to, but I'm a Chinese citizen, so that's kind of for me uh, to do that because uh, China, the China national team only selects the, the swimmers from, you have to train with the national team in order to compete for them. While I'm living in the United States, uh, swim with the University of Wisconsin, so it's hard to happen. But so could you, could, you, could you be on the American team? I have to have a citizenship. Okay. <laughs> well, we all work together and try to help you get that, all right? <laughs> Although these are, these are times when things aren't as certain as they used to be, for sure. So how do you see the world unfolding? I mean, you've been following it, you know, and you're from Chinese China, you, you know, you are interested in the development of China. And yes. Xi Jinping is certainly doing sort of incredible things with the one belt, one road, one road, one belt, as the case may be. Um, you know, how do you see China developing and how do you see relations with China developing? Uh, I think uh, China is developing very well right now, especially in some big cities like where I'm from. So I came here for like one and a half years, then went back. It's even like more incredible than before. Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think that's a big step for China. I mean, I'm sure they're gonna continue to uh, step forward. Then the economics just grow grows crazy. And yeah. 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 I think. Hopefully, uh, China can have a, I'm sure we do, China ha can have a better relationship with the United States and eventually yeah. work together. That's going to be a win-win for both. Yeah, and you yeah. can be right there. You can be right there at that juncture. It's yeah, a great I would, opportunity. I would love to do anything I can uh, to help, like start from my uh, high school in China connects to Merino. That's yeah. something I'm helping right now. Yeah, yeah, and that I, I wanted to ask you about. How do you feel about Mary Noel now that you've been graduated and you've left, left Hawaii, at least for now? How do you feel about Mary Noel? I think Mary Noel is definitely great. It prepared me so well uh, in so many ways. So first of all, it definitely prepared me well to adapt into the lifestyle, the new culture, and a new system of learning. And I think academic-wise, it offers uh, offers me some not unnecessary skill and knowledge to help me step into the college level. And beyond that, I think it is how Marino develop, further developed me uh, with my personal perspectives, you know, uh, to be passionate and to be passionate about uh, learning, sharing and giving back and to be willing and excited about learning new things and facing new challenges. and. Also, to be able to uh, show your care to someone else when they need it. So overall, I think Marino just prepared me so well in the transition into a bigger world yeah. and a higher level of learning. Yeah. Perry, you know, he could come back someday and take your job. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you, if you, if you just think about this, if you think about this, <laughs> he has just said what we want all of our great athletes to be like, right, is really to give back. and. What's number one is academics, and number two is swimming. So yeah. he can have my job anytime he wants. <laughs> it's on tape, you know. Yeah, that's good to go. It's good a lot of go. responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> so Perry, talk about uh, Mary Nolan, his view of the world, his view of globalism, his view of you know, the role of education in Hawaii and now in this country um, to sort of get on, get on, the, get on the, um, the wave of internationalism, of globalism. I think education is is moving really fast, Jay. I mean, it's the, the, not only education itself, but how kids learn. And we're trying to keep up with just how kids learn, right? And in order to keep up with how kids learn, you have to understand what they want and how they want it. And a lot of schools aren't set up to do that, right? They're set up to do it the way they've always done it. So all of our energy is right now set up on how they learn and how they want it. And, and put into perspective what they have to learn and try to put together. And that's why the MX program became so important because it's, it's designed on how they want to learn and how they want it. 
And these courses were set up so they could actually work hand in hand with the cores that were required for graduation. So as an example, you go into STEM and Aero and you take care of all your physics. Ah. You, know, you go into the medical program, you get rid of some of your biology is. Not, not to mention, we, we have a, a program right now where a dual, dual program where kids can actually do all their junior and senior work at HPU, right? And they get credit there and they get credit at Marino and they end up with an AA degree before they get out of high school. <laughs> so that's another example of things moving so fast and kids smart enough to, and, and able enough to do college work. So I guess the big thing is challenge, right? How do we challenge these kids that are moving so fast? They, they're being bombarded with, with technology and social media and everything else in the world. And how do, you, how do you get that filtered so they can actually focus on an MX program, right, at the same time? So I think our, our challenge in the world is how do we do it the way they want it and be able to perform in a way where it's challenging and rigorous? And, and try to step out of the old school mode of we're going to herd kids along in groups and we're going to do the same thing for everybody. That's, that's not us. I mean, we, we're there to personalize it in some way, some, some form. Yeah. So that's important yeah. to us. And it's keeping up. It's keeping up with the changes that are moving faster and faster in the world. I used to say, plus ça change, plus la même. Mm. Now I say, plus ça change, plus ça change. Mm. Even the changes change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. We have some photographs coming on. Uh, these are photographs of things that are taking place at Marinol. You want to make comment about them? Yeah, these are all alums that uh, are mentors for us. So you, you see different alums in there from the medical fields, from uh, the biology fields to, uh, this is the picture of a young kid in our Chinese immersion program, uh, understanding how to write characters. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. And she, uh, that kindergarten class basically needs to learn 80 characters this year as five-year-olds, and then it'll double every year. So next year it'll be 160 and so forth. That's incredible. Uh, it's, it's pretty incredible. This is our high school principal and our vice president as they're kind of outlining the curriculum for MX. And by the way, that, that you got to remember too, the curriculum never stays the same because the MX program is designed of, of what kids want to do. Sure. So if kids don't want to be in a certain MX program, we have to build more into the other Staying three. in touch. Staying in touch. Yeah. I think you would love, you would also love to mention the uh, three pilots the MX program produced. That's very incredible. Like high school students are already have have their license to. So it's really advanced. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This is yeah. a this is a picture of our civil air one of our kids and Marino has a huge uh, presence with civil air patrol, and like M MJ was well, saying, you are a serious officer and so you're a captain in the civil I'm, air patrol. I'm a captain in the civil air patrol, yeah. so I'm very proud to to work in that field. Yeah. And so we do have three kids. We have one student that's already finished his flight. So he's actually got a license. We have two kids that will be finishing in six months. And so during the school day, they're out flying. So that's another thing the MX program brings is we're, we're able to make time for kids to follow their passions and get their schoolwork done all on the same day. So very exciting. Well, Perry, can you take a minute or less and tell, tell our audience what they should be thinking of Mary Noel? I think what parents should really be thinking is uh, Marino is a school, it's small enough uh, to be personalized and big enough to be able to offer a lot of great programs. So we, we're in the middle, we're, we're that school in the middle that uh, challenges uh, schools above us, right, and, th and really supports the schools below us too. I think the Catholic presence is a big thing because you have this intense value situation within the school where kids form decisions and, and form ways of thinking about the world that is not about themselves first. You know, it's about you know, God first and, and them second and everything else comes after that. And I think that's a big thing too, is yeah. that just the value system is huge. And MJ, uh, I'd like to offer you the opportunity to talk to your classmates at Marinol and also talk to your classmates at University of Wisconsin. What do you have to say to them? Uh, well, Keep up the good work. I think uh, don't be afraid of making mistakes because uh, we all learn from there and that's how we become better. And also, I think I would encourage everyone to think about giving back because uh, what we do, our willingness to help and to share does make an impact. That's like our Marino alma mater said. Uh, oh no, I mean, our Marino model says no blood obliged, which means uh, to whom much is given, much is expected. Absolutely. So I would love to encourage everyone uh, to give back. And lastly, 
to have fun because we, you will only go through college once, you will only go through high school once, and that's very short four years. So enjoy and learn as much as you can. You're having fun, aren't you? Yeah, of course I'm having fun. <laughs> that's MJ Mao, he's having fun. <laughs> and, and, and Harry, you are a perfect example of no place on oh, the beach. Thank you. Thank how you about, so how much. about Go Spartans on three, right? One, two, three. Go Spartans. Yeah, there we go. Ha, ha, ha.